What's up, everybody? Nutty Sports Gamer here. In this episode of the 40 Year Sim, we'll be seeing the conclusion of the NBA Finals of 1997 between the Mavericks and Celtics. And then at the end of the episode, we'll be checking out the NBA draft. Bit of a short episode for, for my standards, but uh, we're just getting to the nuts and bolts of it, and then we're just going to get out of here. But uh, let's check out Game 4, highlights of Game 4. And if we're seeing highlights, that might mean something. Might mean that maybe the Mavericks don't win this game. Harper makes that shot, making it 105-104. But uh, Parrish fires back with a bucket of his own. Dennis Johnson as well makes a shot. Five-point lead for the Celtics. Charles Barkley in the paint. Can't make that shot. And the Celtics get the rebound. Less than four minutes left to go. Celtics do not want to go out like a bunch of bitches. Danny Ainge makes that shot. Seven point lead for the Celtics. Bird, McHale. That is a good one. A good shot right there. Seven point lead now. Barkley gets the rebound. Here come the Mavericks. Let's see if they can punch this in. Derek Harper makes the basket. Check out a replay of this. But uh, overall, the Celtics are staying strong in this game. They don't want to be swept. And so they are trying their best to avoid a sweep. Robert Parrish gets fouled here. Goes to the free throw line. We are uh, at the 92nd mark. Just about 94 second mark of this game. And he's going to uh, make this a uh, 7 point lead for the Celtics. So... Let's see if the, the Mavericks can come on, go on a comeback here. Harper makes that shot. Here comes Danny Ainge with a bucket. So, Celtics will go on to win this game. Final score, 120-113. Rolando Blackman had 34 points. Mark Aguirre had 25. Barkley had 17 and 11. Harper with 10 assists to go with uh, 11 points it looks like Larry Bird with 27 points 13 assists and yeah so the Celtics stay alive for 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 one more game at least and the series goes back to Boston and now the Celtics are faced with the possibility of Dallas winning the championship on Boston's home court I'm sure the Celtics wouldn't want that to happen Let's see if that uh, is indeed what happened here. 101 98. Mavericks have the lead. Four minutes left to go. Mark Aguirre posting up. Robert Parrish misses the shot. McHale with the rebound. Celtics in transition. Tarpley to McHale. The dunk goes in. 101 100 now. Blackman. He's going to miss that shot. Rebound Tarpley. We're seeing some Tarpley right now, which is interesting. Tarpley, I think he's a rookie, right? He's getting some minutes in the finals. That's pretty interesting. I guess the Celtics are trying new things because Fred Roberts is out there as well. They have like, I think they have like four power forwards on the, on the court right now. What the hell? I did not realize that as I was uh, capturing this as uh, Mikhail's bucket goes in. 102, 101. Celtics with the lead. Mark Aguirre. Makes that shot. I guess whatever works, right? I mean, if that's what they think they should do. Although I see Danny Age out there now. So I think uh, they've corrected their mistake. I think Dennis Johnson's out there too. So I think that was just, I don't know, 2K doing weird stuff. 104-103. Parrish gets that rebound there. Celtics. Danny Age dribbling. Nearly spins out of bounds. Gets the ball back. Dennis Johnson now has the ball at the top of the key. He's going to pull up, miss that jumper, and Parrish gets the put back. 106, 103. Less than two minutes left to go. Derek Harper with the baseline jumper. It is money. So that cuts the deficit to one. Danny Ainge drives, makes the layup as he falls to the to the floor. And uh, let's check out a replay of that because that was a. Uh, a nice athletic play by by him. And now we have Derek Harper. Is he going to pull up for the jumper? No, he 
passes it to Dumars. He passes it to Mark McGuire. Someone's going to take a shot. And that is a miss. Arby Parrish with the rebound. Ainge running the court. Passing it to McHale. Gets the layup. 110-105. 40 seconds left to go in the game. James Donaldson with the long two. Ill-advised. Barkley gets the putback, though. Cutting the deficit to, to three. Dennis Johnson is going to drive. Pass it out to McHale. Who makes that jumper. And that would be it for this game. So the, the Celtics uh, avoid the embarrassment of losing the finals in their home court. And now the series goes back to Dallas. And let us see if this is the game. Could this be the game where at the end of it, the Mavericks hoist the Larry O'Brien trophy? Um, I think what I do here, actually, now that I'm remembering, I'm going to let you watch this game, the last few minutes of the game, uh, as broadcasted, as captured, and then I'll be back at the end to uh, talk about it. So enjoy the last few minutes of this game. These aren't highlights. This is just the last few minutes of the game. And, uh, yeah, I'll see you on the other side of this. And here's Barkley. Six on the shot clock. Shoots over Parrish. And good from Barkley on the assist by Harper. Harper's got assist number eight here in this one already. Now call the Celtics. Mark Aguilar really making a difference here. They simply have no answer for him right now. And he's making them pay dearly for it. Guys, we'll see if they can get it done. Thank you, David. On the wing, Johnson. Here's Bird. That's in there. Johnson with the assist. Johnson's got his seventh assist in the game. We see this often from Bird. He makes scoring look effortless. Now, here's Harper. Here's Aguirre. He trains the turnaround jump shot. Aguirre's got 24 points. Hey, this is a rinse and repeat, just like last game. He's had his fingerprints all over this one, looking totally dominant. He realizes his strengths on offense and does a fantastic job playing to them and finding ways to stay on Every rebound seems to end up in his hands. How does that happen? He's having himself a game on the board. Well, the work is done early. Reading the ball in the air, establishing position, it all matters. Well, that's one way to extend the lead. And what incredible timing on that play to do just that. Huge momentum to That's got this team fired up. Here, and it's Parrish finishing it off. Big shot that time from Robert Parrish. This is why his guys trust him so much. He delivers. Dallas calls timeout. Pass to Hart. Outside, Aguirre. Passes it to Donaldson. Here is Harper, covered by Johnson. Clock at four. Dallas moving it around. Nice vision by Aguirre. Creating an easy scoring opportunity by finding the open net. Celtics trail by six. McHale set in the bed for Johnson. Now the pass to Andrew. Back to Johnson. Six to shoot. Third high post. Over a quiet. Mavericks with the rebound. Donaldson's got five rebounds tonight. And the shot goes in for McGuire. This is just what Aguirre does. Figure out ways to put the ball in the bucket. Oh, glad we got a chance to check out that fantastic drive one more time. He made that drive look easy, but that had a high degree of difficulty. McHale with a screen on Harper. Here's Johnson. It calls for his seventh bucket of the contest. He's seven for nine. Boy, how much fun has this game been? Come on, man. Each side putting on an offensive clinic. I have really enjoyed it. It's incredible that they're still playing at this level. And the Mavericks call time here. We've got 148 left in the fourth quarter. And the basket good by Barkley. It's obvious he's looking to continue to attack on offense so this lead can expand. And if you were hitting like he is in this one, you would be too. His efficiency is not a lot. 
shot is good, and the Mavericks lead is cut to just five points in the basket from Danny Ainge. Danny Ainge finding a way to come up big right there. Terrific job by Ainge. Now, here's Harper. One twenty-one left in the fourth quarter. Jumars, the pass to Donaldson. Johnson against Harper. And Donaldson gets it to go. And the Mavericks lead by seven. This is the creativity he brings to this offense. Fantastic at involving his teammates with his passing. There's a minute left in the fourth quarter. Here's Ainge. Misses the three. That was absolutely his shot to miss. Plenty of room at the arc. All set up. Just couldn't get it to fall. Here's Donaldson. Defended by Parrish. Harper. Again, the Mavericks score. This run, it's a haymaker. A knockout punch. I think this run has sealed the game. Guys, where are we going to dinner? Time called here. The Celtics decide to talk it over. Collins checked in for Bark. Walker comes in for Aguirre. Davis is subbed in for Harper. Then for the Celtics, Roberts is checked in for Parrish. Walton comes in for McHale, and it's Easting in for Ainge. Bird passes to Roberts. Johnson outside. He feeds it to Bird. Over Walker. He can't get that one, so the Mavericks will take it the other way. It's a four-second differential between the shot clock and game clock. Davis finds Walker. Here's Donaldson. Shoots from 12. A rebound by Walton. Poked loose. And here's Bird from the arc. So the Dallas Mavericks are the NBA champions. All the travel, all the practices, all the meetings, all the games, wins and losses, the emotion, the exhaustion culminating into tonight. And whenever you win the NBA championship, there is a level of accomplishment and excitement that really can't be matched. Pretty amazing to have accomplished this goal. The celebration is here, and this place is going crazy. The bench loves it. The fans obviously overjoyed. This is one of those moments these players will never forget. Now, let's take you to the presentation of the Larry O'Brien Trophy. NBA Commissioner doing the honors. So there you have it, everybody. The Dallas Mavericks are the 1987 NBA champions in this 40-year sim. What did it take? It took drafting Barkley in the 84 draft, drafting Dumars in the 85 draft. Those guys together, um, combined with James Donaldson, Blackman, Mark Aguirre, drafted Kenny Walker in the 86 draft, yes. And uh, Trey Rollins, they got him via trade, but he's not even much of a factor anymore on this team. It's more Donaldson getting the heavy minutes as, at center. And um, they were able to take down the Celtics, who had won three of the last, what, six finals? And uh, that's pretty incredible. And in order to get there, they had to take down the Lakers in seven games. And you know what What this means to me, what this means is the Lakers might have been able to beat the Celtics in the 87 finals if not for these Mavericks, these pesky Dallas Mavericks. Charles Barkley is an NBA champion in this sim. I like this reality. I like Sir Charles uh, having a ring already, right, in his, what, third, fourth season? That's incredible. I, 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 that is so awesome. And Mark Aguirre is the Finals MVP. Twenty-five points per game, five rebounds, five assists. Interesting to think. Does Mark Aguirre still get traded to the Pistons in '89? Because in real life, he he got traded to the Pistons, 
uh, en route to them winning the 89 championship in real life. Uh, let's look at, look, look at retirements. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar Abdul Abdul apparently is going to retire. He is not. I'm bringing him back. I'm going to revive Kareem. He'll be back. Uh, so don't worry about that. Bob McAdoo, Fred Brown. These guys are retiring. Paul Westfall, Chuck Robinson. I'm not going to let Kareem retire two years before he actually does. Come on. What fun is that? So I'm definitely not going to let that happen. Maurice Lucas is uh, is retiring. Uh, or do I overturn this? I don't know if I do, actually. I think I was debating it. And I don't remember what I what I decided on. Actually, I think I think he's retired. <laughs> I think I just decided to retire him. Billy Knight, if you remember, Billy Knight was part of that f one of the first trades I did in the sim, uh, trading him from the Kings to the Bulls. Uh, so that's sayonara to him. Lion Lionel Hollins is gone. Bobby Jones, Bill Walton, Bill Walton managed to win a championship with the Celtics in '86. Of course, he won it with the Blazers in '77 pre 40 year sim. Uh, both Tom McMillan's, I didn't realize there was two, but there were two. Uh, they are retired. <laughs> John Lucas, I think he's going to come back. I, I don't think I let him retire. Because in real life, he didn't retire until like 1990. So he's coming back. So he's going to be back with the Warriors, most likely being their starting point guard, too. He's only 33 years old. Like, you know, you're not that old, dude. You're still effective. You know, the Warriors made the playoffs. Now, they weren't a great team, but they were an eight seed. So uh, he's definitely going to stick around uh, despite him trying to leave. Of course, he's probably going to leave next year. And in that case, I'll, I think I'll just let him retire. And that's about it. That's about it. Kareem is not retiring. I am not letting that happen. I'm bringing him back. And uh, and I hope no one has a problem with that because why would you? Because don't you want to see more Kareem? I want to see more Kareem. I'm not ready for him to retire yet. I'm not ready. So uh, I'm not letting that happen. He's going to retire at the 89th season, just like in real life, because um, because why not, right? Because that's what happened. That's what really happened. And he's too special of a player to just let retire two years early. And that really just messes up the Lakers. And I'm not ready to mess up the Lakers yet. I'm not ready yet. I want to I want to mess up the Lakers in the 90s. Well, we'll see what the 90s Lakers are all about. For now, let's keep things status quo with the Lakers. Uh, as we move forward through the rest of the 80s. Staff retirements, nothing nothing big there. Abdul-Jabbar is going to be in the Hall of Fame. But uh, it's going to be weird because I'm going to import Kareem's DNA to a generic. So it's going to be like the corpse of Kareem uh, on the basketball court. Hopefully it's not too noticeable. Hopefully he's still the same old Kareem. Dan Issel is going to have his jersey retired, which is pretty cool for the Nuggets. Westfall gets his jersey retired as well. Kareem. Oh, I wonder if it's going to mess with things. I wonder if he can still wear 33. Uh, that would suck. I hope when I import Kareem, he can still wear 33. I hope that's not a problem. Because... <laughs> what do I do? I think I... Maybe, do I give him the number three? I don't know. Uh, rule. There's a lot of changes here. Top three picks are done via weighted, uh, random weighted draw... Remaining lotto picks are determined by, by team record. I looked it up. That's actually a real rule change that happened. So I, I, I'm going to allow that. Knicks have new uniforms, as does the Bullets. The Bullets have new uniforms, and the the court is new. The logo is new. I'm curious to see. I think it's going to be the Bullets that I vaguely remember when I was uh, a wee lad. So right before they became the Wizards, I think they had the same jerseys as they had uh as they're gonna have in this game i guess right i don't know how many other uniform changes they went through but uh so that'll be cool to see john stockton and company uh wearing slightly different uniforms uh the chicago bulls i guess are also gonna have uh new uniforms and a new court and uh the cleveland cavaliers are gonna have that what i associate with the early 90s Cavaliers, right? The Cleveland Cavaliers uniforms that they wore when Michael Jordan made the, made the shot, right? In the 89 playoffs. That's what I'm, I'm, I'm excited about that. I'm excited about the Cavs. Uh, we'll get into the lo uh, into the draft in a little bit, but I'm excited about the direction that the Cavs are going. I'm finally excited to see some Cavs games 
and you'll know why once you see how the draft unfolds. Um, I mean, I, I like I like Mark Price as a player, uh, just to, but there's more than that. There's more than that that's happening for the Cavs. A little bit more, anyway. But uh, other 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 than that, there are no no big rule changes other than the draft lottery. Nothing else needed to be done. Uh, none of those other rule changes really make any sense. Let's check out the draft lottery, though. Let us check that out. I'm excited to get into the draft. I hope you are, too. The Sacramento Kings have the Pacers pick because of that, t that trade I made with uh, LaSalle Thompson and Larry Drew. I hope this means the Pacers make the playoffs this upcoming year because otherwise this might have been a bad, bad idea that I did, and then uh, I'll have to find a way to make up for it. If there's any Pacers fans out there, I'll try to make up for it if that trade goes south. Uh, Phoenix Suns get the sixth pick. Uh, so that's nice for them. Let's see who the fifth pick goes to. That is going to be the New Jersey Nets. They don't get the first pick like they did last year. And uh, so everything so far is status quo. And uh, let's check out who uh, the fourth pick is going to go to. Please. San Antonio Spurs, perhaps? No. The Seattle Supersonics, who had the worst, worst record. They had like 13 wins all year. And they end up with the fourth pick. That is rough going. That is not nice. Let's see who the top three is. Cleveland, perhaps? Nope. Sacramento Kings get the top three pick. They have a fun young roster and they get to add yet another young player to it hopefully it's a good one hopefully they start actually progressing and becoming a good team because they have some bonus chris mullen something's got to give Cleveland cavaliers get the second pick i think it's been a while since we had the cavaliers i don't think the cavaliers have had a lottery pick all sim because all their picks went to the maps for some reason uh, we'll get into that later san antonio spurs had the number one pick in the 1987 draft. Uh, yeah, and if you are familiar with who's in this draft, if you see my other videos, that is pretty incredible that that happened that way. I didn't orchestrate anything, I promise you. It really did happen that way. I was kind of like bummed at first, and then I was like, okay, the Spurs have a direction. We have a direction for the Spurs. We have a, we have a direction that the Spurs are going to go down. So I'm I'm excited because it did seem like the Spurs were sputtering. They they had made the playoffs in the '84 and '85 seasons, and after that, uh, you know, they were just kind of tanking. They were really, I don't know what, what was happening with them. But let's see the draft now. Let's see how things go, starting with the number one pick, David Stern announcing it. I don't know what I'm doing here. Uh, oh yeah, I was confused. I think. Uh, I don't know why I'm confused. Oh, I think I, I, I clicked draft prematurely, and I was trying to get out of it, but then I couldn't get out of it. And then I just gave up and just let the draft happen. So that's why I tried to bring up the menu. And David Robinson is number one pick of the draft. David Robertson, Robinson is going to the Spurs. David Robinson is going to the Spurs, just like in real life. Wow. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, I I don't mind it. At least we know what to do with the Spurs a little bit. Reggie Miller is going to go to the Cavs, though. So Reggie Miller and Mark Price in that backcourt is pretty interesting. I like it. I like where that's going. Sacramento Kings get Kevin K.J. Johnson, who, of course, was the point guard of the Suns in the 90s. He was on that, he was on that 93 Finals team. And now he gets to pair up with Chris Mullen and Sabonis. Scotty Pippen to the Sonics, which opens the door for a Sonics trade with the Bulls. Andrew Kennedy, I'm not sure who that is, gets picked fifth. Uh, I know he, he ends up being he's at, he's not a generic he's not a generic, but uh, yeah, I'll, I'll just leave it at that. He's not a generic, but I don't know. Uh, I'll just leave it at that. Kenny Smith, Kenny the Jet Smith going to the Suns. So he's going to be on the Suns. Reggie Williams to the Kings, their second pick of the draft. Jose Antonio Montero 
to the Warriors. Who again, uh, I have thoughts. Armin Gilliam to the Jazz. Not a bad pick for the Jazz. Olden Polonis to the Seattle Se Supersonics. They actually drafted him in real life. Or I think they got him in real life in the draft. So that's pretty interesting. Bart Kofo, I, yeah, I, I got, I got issues. Uh, Dennis Hobson to the Bulls. Um, who's next? Can I talk about my issue? Derek McKee to the Sonics, which is funny because he also really went to the Sonics. Donald Royal to the Cavs. Joe Wolf to the Bulls. I think I can start going fast here, so I should just stick to the draft. Uh, Muggsy Bokes to the Rockets, which is hilarious. Bob McCann to the Pistons. Jose Ortiz to the Blazers. None of these are generics, but I have an issue with the whoever made this draft. Their ratings of these players, I think, were a bit off. Reggie Lewis to the Bullets, which, whoa, that guy was an all-star in the early 90s, and now he's on the Bullets, which is pretty incredible. Christian Welp to the Mavericks. Uh, Horace Grant to the Bucks. Uh, I might orchestrate a trade to make sure he goes to the Bulls. I mean, we're in the second round at this point. So I feel like the Bulls wouldn't have to give up a haul to get Horace Grant. Kevin Gamble, Dallas Kamegis. Who am I looking for? I was looking for somebody. Uh, oh, Mark Jackson. Mark Jackson. Not yet. Doesn't get drafted yet. I was like, where's Mark Jackson? Where the hell is Mark Jackson? Scott Brooks. To the Bulls, Jim Farmer. There he is. Mark Jackson to the Atlanta Hawks. What a steal. I checked his potential rating and everything like that. And he's got like a, a B plus, A minus potential. Uh, so that was just an incredible steal for the Hawks to get him. Um, so they have, they have obviously, Dominique Wilkins. Uh, but they have... Jeff Hornacek and Mark Jackson on their bench now developing and so that's pretty interesting pretty interesting round two actually more than, more more interesting than usual because Horace Grant was the one pick in the first in the second round so yeah pretty fascinating draft overall um, some things uh, you know made it may have landed. Some things may have happened that might have been a little too perfect, right? Like Robert, David Robinson to the Spurs. Uh, Scott Pippen to the Sonics, which all that all really happened. But you got some twists. We got some little twists, right? Reggie Miller to the Cavs now instead of the Pacers. Um, Kevin Johnson to the Kings. Kevin, the Kings better be good now. The Kings now will have Kevin Johnson, Alvin Robertson, Chris Mullen, Otis Thorpe, and Arvita Sabotis as their starting five. If that can't be a playoff team within the next two years, I don't know what to do for the Kings because those are five good players. So I'm not quite sure what more they uh, would have to do to be playoff contenders. So, yeah, so I'm excited. Uh, 88 offseason is going to come up, I think, for the next video. What I'll do is I'll show you the moves that I made, and then I'll give I'll show you a little action, maybe similar to the last, my first video of the '87 season. I think I'll do something similar to that, where I show you all the teams, all the moves that were made, the roster changes, the updates to the rosters that I did, and then I'll show you a little action of all the players involved, as long as there are you know on the court. I mean, I don't want to have to spend too much time trying to find like. Mark Jackson. I don't think Mark Jackson is going to get any minutes for the Hawks, for example. But if they're starting, or if it's like, you know, Scotty Pippen, maybe he comes in in the second quarter of a Bulls game. I'll try to see if I can if I can, if I can, uh, get some Scotty Pippen minutes. But, uh, but, yeah. So, stay tuned for the next episode, which might not be for a little while, maybe a week or so. I hope you enjoyed these finals. What an amazing turn of events for the Mavericks to win the 87 championship and we got David Robinson to the Spurs I don't know I, I like it I I'm I, I, I'm I'm I like it <laughs> I think I like it anyway I hope you like this video I hope you like this series I hope you're excited about the 88 season we got expansion teams coming the season after that 
and the season after that. So a lot of exciting things happening on the in the 40 year sim. This is Nutty Sports Gamer. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe to this video. And uh, goodbye.